Hello and hi there, people of the internet. Welcome back to the Cosmic Camel stream. This is it. This is the final session for Alan Wake 2. Well, not final, final. Like, not until a very long time, final. Um, meaning, today we finish the Night Springs DLC. Uh, if, the, um, if the third episode is as long as the others, this should be a one hour stream. And then. We are done! Finally! I can move on to something else, I can play another game in English! Um, until one of, one of two things happen. Um, first, maybe at some point, uh, the Lake DLC, I think it's called. Let me check what, what, what is the... The Lake House, yep. The Lake House DLC is going to drop at some point, so we'll come back for this. Or maybe, and I think this is going to be afterwards because i don't think the lake house is going to like drop in more than six months or anything but at some point i will come back to this game and play the final draft play uh, the fabled new game plus which is supposed to tie all loose ends sorry about that it, uh, it's hard to manage foggy glasses and a headset at the same time. Um, so yeah, at some point uh, we'll come back to do the final draft, uh, the new game plus uh, that is supposed to give you the proper ending of the game. And I've spoken at length about uh, um, about why I do not want to do this right now, so I'm not going to do it again. Episode 1 of the DLC was really fun. Episode 2 was really underwhelming and I heard Episode 3 is the best of the bunch, so you know what? Let's check it out now. Episode 3, Time Breaker. Oh yes, give me time travel shenanigans. I love these. The only time travel element we've had is when Alan was summoned in the past by Saga. Yep. What if the path not taken had in fact been our charted course? Would we be happy? Or are we, with our set of choices behind us, the lucky ones? And what if nothing would be different? What if for some of us, our destiny across the endless number of versions of ourselves has been defined and locked beyond any causality of circumstance, beyond the forces in any one reality, but across... And he would know. One man, the magnetic pull of destiny is so great it breaks time and space. Is this going to be about door? Join this lone operative, many versions of him, in fact, as he chases his nemesis, a dangerous being known as the master of many worlds, across the multiverse, across the many versions of a city that is always the same. Do we get to play as well in door? In That sounds like someone who would travel the multiverse. Reality bending episode, time breaker. Which is exactly what Wallin Door is. It's a dimensional traveler. Uh huh. No matter how many parallel realities I need to brave, how many lives, how many versions of me it takes, I will stop it. And I will. No! <laughs> that we play as the sheriff. Cut. Oh, we don't. Take five. Okay. No, I think we play as him. Question is, what are the circumstances? Was that okay? I mean, I can do more. I can do less. Who's yes. the director? Yes. Yes. Sean, I'm really happy. Let's talk. That's Sam Lake. This is not James McCaffrey doing the, the voice acting. Further. Immerse ourselves into this story. Believe in it. Make it crazier, wilder. From the very beginning, we've seen Alex Casey with Sam Lake's face. But of course, Sam Lake wasn't the voice actor. Okay, we play uh, as Tim. But this is definitely Sam Lake voicing himself. Well, a version of himself. Oh, and we're not playing as 
team, we're playing as Sean Ashmore, the actual actor. Because this face, I cannot look at his face, but yeah, this is Sean Ashmore, who played in Quantum Break and now is in Alan Wake 2. And it's still the set. Okay, reuse the sets and environments again. So yeah. So this is supposed to be real life with real life Sam Lake, who's a director now for some reason, and real life Sean Ashmore. Wait to tell you more. You wanted to talk? It's awesome to be doing this with you again, Sam. Yeah, that's Sam Lake. It's so good to have you back. We've been dreaming about this for so long, and now finally we are making Timebreaker, the video game. It's happening. Yeah, and FMV as well. That's so cool. Of course. That was part of the previous game as well. Yeah, previous game is Quantum Break. <laughs> I mean, at some point, is there a ceiling to how self-referential you can be? I mean, can, can you top Manowar in terms of, you know, ref, uh, referencing your own work over and over and over again? I'd like to talk about I think we're getting close to the Manowar bar. Hey, I could talk about this for days. He's a multiversal agent goes by many names as there are many versions of him. Breaker, Branch, others. He's searching for his lost love while his ruthless nemesis, Dor, Dor. the master of many worlds, is murdering... So it looks like Dor is a villain. Across parallel well, in, in this iteration, down and at least. Dor. That's so cool. You've done cool superhero roles in the past. Long term, the agent will grow into the ultimate iconic superhero. Oh, that's awesome. So the vortex and the gadget. I'm, sorry, I keep forgetting its name. There's there's just so many acronyms here. But it helps me travel through realities. Acronyms are cool, right? Like tiny mysteries. You power up your PRS, polyhedron reality shifter with a SEN shifter energy node to oh God. a Lumi Vista TV and ride the vortex between realities. It's all REC, Ripple Effect Corporation tech. And you have a gun and a TPS, Time Breaker Solidifier, to defend yourself. Okay, that's a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's the point, and still, it's a lot. You clearly have your own vision um, of the multiverse. The right vision, the truth, it's all out there. That's where these ideas and inspirations come from. They see true. Somewhere this year a stalking is part of the video game and another version of you is playing it. How close Somewhere is this to the real Sam Lake? The agent is real and he could appear here through a portal any time now. Right. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right, Sam. <laughs> you are a maniac, man. Totally. Yeah, how much of a maniac are you really? And how much of an egomaniac do you have to be to put yourself at this length in your own games? I mean, Sam seems cool, but you gotta wonder, right? You gotta wonder how much of this is, you know him doing a, a circle circle jerk with many versions of himself the Max Payne model the Alex Casey model the Sam Lake model <laughs> I don't know I'm wondering okay seems nice enough so um, what do we shoot next we need to set up for the next scene where your nemesis pulls you into a parallel mm, I wonder whether this is going to happen for real. I left the latest draft of the screenplay for you there. See you in a bit. Cool. Can't wait. Okay, go to the green room, look over the script. Sometimes it's hard to tell if Sam's joking. Yeah. Uh, deadpan Finnish humor. And a reputation of being a bit out there. I picked up a weird vibe when he talked about the multiple. Of course, you picked up a weird vibe. The guy is weird, but you know it comes with the territory. When, I mean, oh, okay, 
that was predictable. Hello? Yeah, you have to be a little weird in order to come up with, you know, such con convoluted stories. Green room for Sean Ashmore, that's me. Oh no! The fuck is this? I thought I'd gone mad. Then I realized Sam was playing a crazy prank on me. There's no way this was real. Yeah, but. <laughs> okay, let's go through the script first. I got I got an achievement just because I read the script. So it's Time Breaker written by Sam Lake, okay. So suddenly psychedelic color lights flare up through the open doorway. Of course, yeah, we know this. We know this trope again. But I trust Sam. How are you going to make this fresh and not just yet another example of, oh, the pages are telling the story of the game as it's unfolding before our very eyes. So yeah. Branch, fierce panic shot, no, door, this is your end, loud struggle, actor, what the fuck, hello. So the actor steps into the room, but he sits, yeah, it's a description of what's currently happening. So uh, it's the actor's double. Okay, then I realized Sam was playing a crazy prank. Player, investigate the page. Uh, what is this? Okay, didn't say yet, but... I think it said it when I when I clicked on uh, when I pressed the A button. Okay, let's examine this and get lost in a parallel dimension, I suppose. Time breaker, solid fire. Admire how real the body and the props look. Jesse? another one of you, huh? What the fuck? Oh, I didn't know that. Excuse me? <laughs> no, th this is just it's a prank. It's just a prank. Wait, are you Shit. You're not Branch. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I didn't expect Jesse to be here in this one. I didn't know she would be in both episodes. Are, are you cast in this game, too? Listen to me. There are things you need to know. You okay. The, the, the music is too loud and the dialogue is not loud enough. I need to balance this. Uh, audio. Yeah, sounds about right. Great danger. You must do exactly what I tell you. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. I blanked out and I was suddenly someplace else. I'd had gaps in my memory before. But that's the movie star lifestyle for you. This was something else entirely. Okay, so... Is this Alan Wake 1? This looks like Alan Wake 1, this environment. But then again, it's it has to be an environment we've seen before in, the, in Alan Wake 2. Because they didn't create any new graphical elements for these DLCs. And I, I'm old. So, this is this character's fate like you get blinked out of reality by door over and over again this is what happens keeps happening to me redheaded woman at the door she looked familiar she was trying to tell me something and then it went dark it felt like a dream <laughs> think 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 man i need to get out of here a psychotic episode or was the multiverse true after all did sam do this an elaborate hoax off no. the wall method acting reality show. Okay, that would be a bit fault. much, okay. don't you think? Okay. Yeah, let's let's go with that. Act like this is true. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I can do this. And once it's over, we'll have a good laugh. And then I will punch Sam in the face. <laughs> okay, so I have no idea which way the right way, so I'll just Oh Okay, never mind. It's all the same. So 50 bullets is a lot, but I'm not as overpowered as I was in episodes 1 and 2. 
Like I only have two extra batteries. In the other episodes, I would have like 30 by now. No, no, the ma maximum was 24, which is huge. Yeah, that's a good atmosphere, but it really reminds me more of the first game. Where the hell am I? More multiverse nonsense. Night Spring but City Park was committed to play along. Parallel reality bleed zone. Cross dimensional anomaly, no trespassing. Authorized rec personal only. So in this dimension, the FBC is the REC. Because this is exactly the kind of sign the FBC would leave. Well, well what did Sam say? There would be more subtle about it. To find an energy node and use this rod thing with it, the PRS, was it? And look for some kind of TV to get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, the whole let, let's just act af, as if this is true. Of course, it could be a coping mechanism. But, uh, I'm not buying it. No one sane would go like, you know what, I'll just roll with it. <laughs> so unless this is the game telling us that Sean Ashmore in real life has psychotic episodes and has a hard time telling reality from fiction. No, no, no. Door's coming. He knows where I am. Pull the things out. It's coming. He knows about the trailer. I need to hide the energy. I need to get it away from the trailer. Away from the TV. Okay. No. Ken! No! Oh my god. Oh my god! I wasn't certain this was a prank anymore. Yep. I heard a voice in my head. Yep. It sounded like me. Insanely, I heard the thoughts of another version of me. The one living here. The trailer was his. I'd check it out. Don't think. Just act. Okay, this makes more sense. Like, don't question it. Just go along. Oh. Flashbang. It's a REC flashbang. Yeah. Okay, so far this is very enjoyable. The Luma Vista TV. According to what Sam had said, I needed the energy node. The other me had hidden it away from this trailer. Okay, I'll keep exploring the trailer anyway. And then I'll have to find the energy node. Okay, maybe that's an information. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's not a loop. It's a spiral. The handwriting was mine. One of the theories about the multiverse and door. The okay. master of many worlds. Okay. I'll wait until he stops talking so I can read aloud. One of us is chosen one who can stop him, replace him. RAC agent branch, time breaker, James S. You are a paranoid nutcase. Okay, that's help. Disappear off the grid the while connecting in our dreams. In the forest, somewhere. Okay, I heard you. I time. Let me fucking read I everything. Red Hill Moon, I, I must find her again. Yep, Lisa, Lisa, Jesse, Elizabeth, Lisa, Savage, Darling. I hear their thoughts when they die. Are these alternate versions of me? But there's Jesse in there. RST, Confederate, don't wipe. Why the acronyms? What are they hiding? Who the masters of many the master of many world darling's book that's Casper Darling from Control, spelling the strings, I must hide. Door, me and other me, someone else. He who wrote this string theory. Multiverse, okay, okay, these are ramblings. Polyhedrons are the key. I remember this thing about polyhedrons in control, but it's a bit blurry in my memory. I played control a long time ago. And like there were a lot of inform there was a lot of information in that game. You cannot expect someone to remember it all. Okay. So, energy node in the forest. How do I find it? Okay. Okay. I hit it. It's safe. It's safe. It's safe. The creek's deep in the forest all the way. The waterfall fits in. Well, that's convenient. Now get the fuck away from here before door zeroes it on me. I'll make it. 
I'm the chosen one out of all the versions. Me. Yeah, that's what they'll say. Yes. He's hidden the energy node at the creek in the forest. I have to find it. Okay, let's find the creek and the waterfall. It's going to be a little hard to not get lost in this, but I mean, that's the point, isn't it? Good thing I have points of interest like these, so I can know I haven't been there before. I'm going to get jumped. I mean, I have resources that are useful for combat, so... A waterfall, I need to go up the current, okay. can I? I found the creek. Cool. So, where's the energy node? I will find the energy node when the prompt will appear. Not this prompt, the next prompt. Okay, okay, okay. So what's it gonna, what is it gonna be? Shadow people taken? Oh, oh, that's the polyhedron. I know polyhedron when I see one. Hi there, you dimensional glowing disco ball. Was charged now. Cool. I had to get back to the trailer and the TV. So that was the <laughs> energy node. How do I? You can't escape. I am everywhere. So So in this reality, when in this DLC at least, Wallendor is a villain, because it's been very unclear. Fuck. I've seen an analysis for this shit is a correct reaction. But it was all real. Door. Oh shit. The master of many worlds was murdering versions of the agent, played by me. Versions of myself. Shadow people. Okay, I still have the automatic. Oh, okay, I have ten batteries. In the multiverse, I had to become the role to survive. Be the agent. I had to get back to the trailer and the TV. I'm going. Use my PRS on it. Okay, that's convenient, and I still have the automatic revolver which makes no fucking sense meaning if I hold down the trigger it goes into machine gun mode which is ridiculous but I'll, I'll take it door would be coming for me next I didn't want to face him fuck that <laughs> fuck that but I couldn't shake the feeling that it was inevitable yep well uh, I can get behind the fact that part of your reasoning Sean. So yeah, uh, there was um, a doubt about Walling Door being like a positive or a negative present in the game because if you think about it, and this is not my analysis, something I read, but the whole Herald of Darkness sequence, the musical, it sounded like Door trying to give Alan some positive reinforcement because the whole point of the song is to convince him that his choices were justified like he came uh, to Bright Falls because he wanted to save his marriage he started spiraling out of control because he couldn't handle success use the PRS the polyhedron reality shifter on the TV to get out of here I felt a strange I mean the message of the song is Pretty positive. Would take me. I was going to run into this door person. Yep. But I couldn't stay here either. Let's dive into the TV once again.
Ocean view. Will you acknowledge the fact that you're in black and white? <laughs> that shit's weird, man. <laughs> if you're supposed to be shown Ashmer, the actual real person, you would know this. Okay, Ocean View Hotel again. Oh fuck, that worked. I wish they had crafted at least one new environment for the DLC. I was in a different reality, but not better, worse. Maybe by thinking of Dor, I traveled closer to him. To where he was in control. Next time, I'd focus on something else. The clocks showed the way. They'd guide me through to get what I needed. So, entertainment is midnight. Tango is three. Coffee is nine. Just screenshot this in case I need to remember. Entertainment, midnight or noon. Tango, three o'clock. Coffee, nine o'clock. You got this. Find another node. Another TV. Yeah. Well, obviously, not going to acknowledge that all the color is gone. So, yeah, one thing I wish there were at least one original environment in this. I think the only one we saw was the basement. Um, in, uh, in, the in the previous episode, when we went down the trap in the warehouse and we entered this room with constellations, like star maps all over the, the walls, that was new, that was cool. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, I get giving us power because we've been lacking power in the main game because it was survival horror. But then you have to give me stronger opposition because I'm just going to plow through every enemy. It's always the right time. The version of the lobby in the right time when what I needed was there. So it's always the right time to visit Night Spring City Ocean View Hotel. Thanks for hotel's unique time anomaly. The time is up to you. Did you oversleep? Visit our morning lobby for the never-ending breakfast buffet. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Craving one of our delicious signature cocktails? Stop by the 6 o'clock lobby where cocktail hour is always in full swing. Just follow the clocks to the time of your choice. At the Ocean View Hotel, the right time is only a door away. So. That's the lobby. No, entertainment room. I don't remember. Where are my screenshots? It's been, it's been a moment <laughs> since I used that. Uh, nope. Nope. Oh, this is it. So this took almost as much time I would have taken for me to just go back. So entertainment, tango three, coffee nine. Okay. Let's go for the entertainment. I love being entertained. Uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do them all. The same warning sign as before. Yeah, same thing. It made me think the fabric of this place was unraveling. Yep. Something you do better. What do you think? Okay, how many times am I going to have this loop upon itself? Okay, so now it's entertainment. What's different? So there's a TV here. A Luma Vista TV. I just needed entertainment. Yeah. Okay. 
I couldn't hear the thoughts of the other me. The one native to this reality. Maybe Dor had killed him already. Not a happy thought. Okay. Let's go for 6 o'clock, so I think... Is this pattern going to repeat itself like... Yep. This is a hidden loading screen. And then, when I bust out of this, it's going to be another one. So this is... Oh, shit. So it just makes... Shadow people appear, but... Oh, they're fast. Okay. Just need time to reload. Okay, they're harder to kill than the ones before, which is good. Because I need time to reload and I don't have any. Okay, these don't change. And this one has no TV, so the TV is in the entertainment version of the lobby, which makes sense. So this is the cocktail version of this of the lobby. I can go back to the entertainment through here. And nine o'clock is yeah, I'm not going through the screenshot again. Nine o'clock is coffee. Is this going to be a reference to episode two? Like with the evil dark roast coffee hell bent on taking over the world and co converting everyone? Okay. Also, if Dor can spot me, why isn't he coming for me? Why is he just spawning? Oh, this, this is where I was before. So the coffee lobby is the one I first walked in. So yeah, if if Dor knows where I am, why is he just spawning shadows and not coming from me himself? So twelve o'clock is TV. Six o'clock. No, this is not where I came in, because this would be empty. I'm not sure. Six o'clock is cocktail. And the tango is the one we haven't tried yet, so yep. Let's go for it. Things new here. Do I get? Oh my God! Again. Ben Sasio Nissan. Is that the name of the real actor? Thomas Zane. Thomas Zane. Yeah, but not. Spelled the way it should be spelled. Okay, this is Arti. And by the way, I did a bit of research and I got reminded that Arti is listed in control as a supernatural entity. They can't really, they, they don't know what to make of him. They just know that he helps and he's tied to the oldest house. And like he seems to have appeared at the same time, at the house. There you go. I wanted to use a flashbang, but it's not working. So 
So yep, we are in a loop. So yeah, yeah about Arte, I got interrupted. Nothing has changed and the clocks are always the same. Can I go back the way I came? Is that an option? I don't think it is. Nope. Thing is, I've seen every version now. We are in the Tango lobby, yep, obviously. Well, I can I haven't been in here in the Tango version. Does it change? Well, they keep showering me with items. Okay, I'm going to have to go into time zones I've already been to, but Honestly, I don't see what else I can do. Okay, let's go to noon again. Or midnight, whatever. Yeah, this never changes. And I cannot enter any of those rooms. Okay. Okay, TV version. Why so much shit? Why would you give me so many items and ammo and everything? Oh, that's new. No Time Breaker, the comic book. It made a comic book of their game. But then maybe Poison Pill didn't even exist in this reality. Spring Adventures through Time and Space, Who is a Mysterious Traveler, all is revealed in the pages of the trippiest collection of side fiction stories on the stands. Secret Origin of Door! Include a 3D pullout map of the Ripple Effect Corporation, the zaniest story we've ever published. Okay. And more resources, yes, please. It's like they really want to make every fight trivial. Like, the threat is not the enemies. You will destroy the enemies as you find them. Because you're basically a walking tank at this point. This is stupid. Why would they do that? Okay. So, how many versions do we have of the noon? No, we, we only have four versions. I mean the noon version. Do we know what... Yeah, I'm in the entertainment. And we have the tango, the coffee, and the cocktail. Let's go back to this one. Still the same, still the same. So, how much longer is this going to work before it becomes tedious? This has been emptied already. Nothing new. Yep, coffee and rolls. And blood stains on the floor. Okay, that's new. Okay, I'm going to try to go back to the entertainment, see if anything changes. Yes, you have. I'm doing trial and error here. I don't know what else to do. Was this comic book always here since the first time? I don't think so. So we've done coffee and entertainment twice. Let's go back to Tango, 3 o'clock. This sign wasn't here before. So we got subtle changes every time and these bullet holes these are new okay that's interesting 
Tango again and signs of destruction. So those weren't there either, so what else is new? I don't even know where the music's coming from. Do we have a boombox? Do we have a speaker? Okay, Tango room number two, we have, yeah, some more useless resources, I'm full, nothing else I can do, I can't take you, entertainment, coffee, what, what was that? Okay, let's go for cocktail. I just think I I just need to go into enough loops. So uh, at some point changes will happen. So that's cocktail hour. Where are the cocktails by the way? Must be in bar? Nope. Nope. What am I supposed to do? Do I just shoot the clocks? No. No, no, they're just scenery. I'm going to I think I'm going to be methodical here so cocktail has been done twice tango has been done twice coffee there you go this has to be a PE tribute PT tribute, by the way. No PT, the playable teaser. The sadly departed uh, Silent Hills demo. That turned some PlayStation 4s into the most expensive PS4s in the world if you still had this demo on your hard drive after it was delisted and removed from the store. It was all about the loop. A corridor that looped into itself and got weirder and weirder. Okay, another one. I another thing I can do is try to go into this in order, like entertainment, tango, coffee, because it's one, two, three, right? So maybe that's it. So entertainment, then tango, then coffee, then cocktail. Even if it's not chronological, because. I should go to cocktail between tango and coffee. We'll try both. So first, entertainment. Nope, that's not you. That's you. Can I go back here? Oh, maybe that's something. I mean, something I never did before. Uh, nope. Nope, doesn't doesn't look like it's changing anything. Come on, Sean. Figure it out. Okay, so we've been to entertainment. Let's go to Tango now. She's going in a straight line, which may or may not mean something. So coffee or... A cocktail. 
Let's try cafe. Because one, two, three. Oh, that's it. One, two, three. The PRS was charged up. Now I find my way back to the TV. Okay. When I used the TV to travel between realities, I was thinking of Dor. And the Vortex brought me here, where the Time Breakers attacked me. Oh, that's the Shadow People of the Time Breakers. So basically, it was just a... <laughs> I just had to follow basic instructions. The sequence is on the wall. Okay. Still not much of a threat. They're fast. They die easily. This time. A different attack. What are you going to? Yeah. Good thinking. Think about Jesse. I think maybe the sound effects are still a bit loud. Oh, oh, that's trippy. I mean, comic book mode. A strange feeling. Still, yet moving. Like frozen snapshots on a sequential path. And yet, thoughts flowing free. Like text read out loud. Okay. It's it's you. I made it. Thor pulled you away. I thought you were gone, for sure. I focused on you when I entered the vortex. I, I was trying to reach you. You are full of surprises. Okay. Let's try this out. Welcome to the headquarters of the Ripple Effect Corporation. We were making a video game of the multiverse, but now it's and with real. real and not real exist side by side in the multiverse. Echoes flow through it like currents in a cosmic ocean, the Sea of Night. The sea of Night. So, in case you don't know, this is a clear tribute to the first Max Payne, because in the first Max Payne, um, the narrative bits were made were uh, displayed in a comic book style it was much of a you know noir watercolor aesthetic didn't look like this but this going into comic book style is not a coincidence conceptual fictional real more real than real many versions of us all in hidden interaction linked by the energies that ripple through realities one of you is killed in an explosion of dangerous energy, and another one instead gains superpowers. Oh. And yet another one meets an alien guardian angel. In one reality, we're not even real. Or as you say, characters in a video game. Okay, this is a classic, but it's well put and well told. Why is he after me? Who is Dor? There are legends about him going back further than we can trace. They say he found an opening to a horrifying parallel reality that consumed him, gave him access to all reality. So he was a regular dude to begin with. The feedback loop killing all other versions of him. And he's like, I am 
He became the only unique individual in all of the multiverse. Like the only one with only one version of himself. We don't know why, but he sees the versions of you as a threat. He's killing them. Bringing them back as time breakers. We thought he was after Branch. Now I'm thinking he's been after you. Title of your sex tape. All right. What can I do? He must be stopped. He leaves dead realities in his wake, and he is only. Don't tell me this is the end of the episode. I'm just an actor. You could have fooled me. You travel through realities with greater accuracy than anyone I've ever seen. Beyond door, even. You picked it up just like that. Finding the place that made him may be the key to Yeah, yeah, make me play this. That was don't make this a cliffhanger and don't end the episode no, here. Find it. Maybe you can. I would be pissed. I will be pissed if this is it. Was there something between you and Branch? What you think you are feeling is just an echo. Some other version of us in some other lifetime. But maybe... You'll come back for me? Maybe. Wish me luck. Luck is just an echo of an event. Can oh, that's rough. Like, react. nothing is real. Everything is an echo. What you feel for me is just, like, yeah, the repetition of something, an alternate version of you, felt for an alternate version of me. But if that's true, where does it all begin? I mean, let's... For argument's sake, let's con consider this is true. Like, shown likes Jesse because somewhere a, a, an alternate version of him liked an alternate version of Jesse. But then, why did that version like Jesse? Not everything can be an echo, because in order to be an echo, there has to be a real sound being echoed. It has to start somewhere. Same goes with luck. Like, if the fact that you succeed or fail in reality A creates a ripple effect and then makes you succeed or fail in reality B, there has to be a, a, a starting point. There has to be a, a zero event. I like this stuff. <laughs> I was an REC agent. This was my mission now. I focused on him. The darkness, the entropy, Tor, the master of many worlds. We continued. Are you fucking kidding me? No! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a bus fight! Give me something! Oh... Oh, give me a... 2D side scroller action game? Yes, oh my god, this is so cool. Okay, this is clunky as shit. And there's only one button. Okay, no. Yeah, there's only the trigger. But. Uh, I've been complaining all this time that they never created new assets for this. So I don't get to complain now. This is fun. Oh shit. Oh! 
That's 3D. Okay. So I have unlimited bullets and it looks like proximity means damage. Okay, I tried to sidestep but it didn't work. How many waves do I get to fight? And if I put my back to a wall, does it make it easier? Because it's only hard if I get enemies from both sides. <laughs> Impressive. Out of all the versions, you might be the chosen one. Join me and we'll rule together. Fuck you. No, never. I'm the hero here. You will regret this. Also, I was lying. Ha ha ha. Again? Same thing? Okay. Do I get you the same TV? No, this one's broken. Okay. I suppose there's another one at the other end of the corridor. This is a good idea but I think it's poorly executed I would have loved you know a proper side scroller I've been brought to the very edge of the metaverse or some deep dark trench in it oh that's a new environment and it kicks ass everything sucked dry of color and energy oh this is cool Polyhedrons, this is such. I had to this reminds me of the quarry. Or the means to travel on. In control. Confront the master of many worlds, yes! At last, a freaking bus fight, something! I've got 322 bullets. You should not. That's a big polyhedron. How many more? Whoop! What if I just run for the polyhedron? to find a TV. I don't need to fight these guys. <sighs> I think I can't read this because I'm still in combat. Can I now read these? Yes. It felt like the text was the only thing holding this place together. All of it being reduced to its conceptual form. So this was so real. Just be words. This was the reality at the edge of the multiverse, devoid of color and energy, an entropic wasteland. Every shape here was formed by dark pages filled with pale words. The underlying tissue of all reality now exposed. The only other thing that remained were the dead energy nodes built to last to the very collapse of the universe. Behind each dark dune of this desert lay a further expanse of nothing. There was nothing here except decay and in inevitability. The path to oblivion was growing short, but time marched on regardless. Uh, there was another one. 
I lifted the black page in front of my eyes and read the pale letters. In it, I lifted the black page in front of my eyes and read the pale... Okay, 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 okay. I think in Loman's term, we can say that shit is getting fucked. I think this was supposed to be an insta kill. Ah, oh, fucking leave me. I just need to heal. Okay, that's better. Okay, that was a little hard. Oh, oh he's so much faster with the uh, healing pads. <laughs> okay, this is a proper boss fight now. After dreaming of sleep, you come to and gradually become aware of the utter lack. There is nothing. <laughs> focus. I'll go back to sleep. You search for something to focus on. An idea of a geometric shape comes to your mind. A pentagonal trapezohedron. How do you know the name of this shape? That you don't know. You feel it's a fading, drifting apart, losing your essence in the stream of consciousness, the ebbs and flows of your thoughts. Hold yourself together. You fight to hold yourself together, to swim against the current, to break to the surface, coming to focus. You realize your first impression was wrong. There is something, and there is you. Slowly you sent the world the, sorry. Slowly you sent the words describing this, describing how it is here in the farthest reaches of the multiverse. You have reached a reality where only ideas exist, an idea of reality, a conceptual reality, a thought tries to form in your mind. Focus on the thought. You focus on the thought and it becomes clear. In the beginning, that was the word. Here, only words exist. They are everything. They describe this world and you in it. Decipher the words. The words describe you standing in a barren, conceptual desert. It stretches on to eternity. In a place outside time, you wait an immeasurable amount of time. Above, ideas of stars silently collide and collapses, collapse into black holes. With the idea of a desert comes the idea of feeling thirsty. Coffee or tea? Oh, this is unwake coffee. As you imagine it, a cup of coffee, your favorite hot beverage, manifests itself. The idea of it. So, this reminds me a lot of the first... Of the second... I think it was the second DLC for Alan Wake 1. Uh, the Rider. The Rider was the name of the DLC. Where you find you found yourself in a world where everything was displayed as words like you didn't find items like you you found instead of finding bullets you would find places with the word ammunition written on the screen and these would be actual bullets you could use in the game so that's the same basic idea so the concept of its delicious smell and taste you savor it you image you imagine savoring it you understand that here your thoughts as are real as anything so assess assess your situation you realize you could be trapped here forever. Vaguely remember that you are on a mission of vital importance. You feel the details of it already dissolving. You must figure out a way to escape before you lose yourself again. 
When traveling through the vortex, you always had a focal point in mind. Could that be the solution here as well? Do we focus on Dor or Jesse? We had a mission. It was to kill Dor. Let's do this. You focus your thoughts on the master of many worlds. The desert dreamscape around you darkens. You vaguely feel the terrible weight of an alien, godlike awareness shift many realities away. How can you possibly find him, let him face him? Meditate to learn or prepare for war? Meditate to learn. To calm yourself and seek harmony, striving to expand your consciousness to gaze into the secrets of the multiverse and understand your enemy. After struggling for what feels like a lifetime, you feel no closer to your goal. Your mind is not pure enough to grasp the secrets of the multiverse, let alone comprehend its master. You need to study this art to rise to a higher level of awareness. Force yourself to continue or set out into the desert to find answers. By the way, if you are too young to understand the reference, the first adventure games on computers were like this, text-based RPGs. I played one of those when I was a kid. I don't remember anything about it. So, do I force myself to continue or do I set out into the desert to find answers in uh, what is a very obvious Bible reference? Set out into the desert. Set out in search of answers. Featureless, the desert continues as far as you can see in every direction. <sighs> this is so it. This is so it. Go north. You go north. Desert continues to stretch before you. Above, eyes of supernovas flare and wink out. Go north. You go north. Sand slipping beneath your feet. Sweat bathes on your forehead. Above, galaxies spiral endlessly. Go north. You go north. The footprints behind you are the evidence of your progress, but the desert seems to continue forever. Above, strange constellations suggest disturbing shapes. Go north. You go north. As you wander, you start to lose all sense of time and place. Just when you are about to lose all hope, you think you see something glimmering to the east. Go east. You go east, you approach what you saw, hopeful and desperate. There is nothing there, it was a mirage. You strain to fail and you fall to your knees. Crawl east. Am I gonna die? Going weaker, you crawl slowly east, you're parched and starving. Dimly, you realize you're close to dying. You're lying on the ground. Push your body or channel your mind. Channel your mind. The mind is everything in here. You strain to clear your murky head, willing the universe to show its secrets to you. Suddenly, out of a blinding light, a silhouette of a man appears. Look at the man. He looks like you. But the way he carries himself and the glint of deep wisdom in his eyes tells you that this is you from the future, he offers you a seed. Look at the seed. It seems like any other seed, but when you stare at it, the image of a towering tree flashes in your mind. Take the seed. You accept the seed the man offers. Then he is gone. Plant the seed. You plant the seed in the ground, it takes root and grows. A sapling rises from the ground, it grows fast. Soon you stand at the foot of a gigantic tree, reaching for the skies. It is the tree of life. It is the world tree. Memory drifts down through it. Bows like... I don't know that word. Bows like a falling leaf. I have to find out. You follow the memory, see a comic book in your hands. Are they your hands? You can't remember. The comic is about the legend of a god who hung himself from a branch of a wall tree, sacrificing himself to gain secret knowledge. Are, are we, like, following the American Gods plotline now? But that shit is from American Gods. Well, it's from, you know, um, uh, Nordic folklore and uh, mythology. Contemplate the nature of sacrifice or hang yourself from the tree. Hang myself from the tree. You will sacrifice yourself to gain the knowledge you're after, to be reborn with it. You come at the trunk, hang yourself from a branch. As you begin to choke, you man travels along the branches of the tree on a spiritual journey. Follow the branches. The branches of the tree reach out through all realities, supporting all realities. The multiverse is born. You sense all realities around you, all lives, and whole history unfolding like a river flows. Folk lightning striking, a flower blooming, slow motion explosion blossoming like a tree. You hang there for nine nights. It feels like an eternity. Then the branch breaks and you fall to the ground. You hear the tree groan. Look at the tree. 
You see that the tree has grown old and is dying. From the highest branch, a magic fruit sprouts and ripens. As you stand watching the tree dies, you notice the fruit has fallen to the ground next to you, alongside a large crooked branch. Pick up the fruit. You pick up the magic fruit, it rots away in your hands, leaving behind a familiar looking seed. Suddenly you become, oh, we are in loop. You become aware of a man lying on the ground close by, seems weak and ill, moaning to himself. Something stirs in your mind, a forgotten memory of a faded dream. Offer the seed to the man. You offer the seed to the man. As you step closer and lift his gaze to look at you, you recognize him. He is you from the distant past. You take the seed, then he is gone, vanishing as suddenly as it appeared. Pick up the branch. You pick up the crooked branch, tracing its path with your fingers. A distant memory stirs. What was your mission? You have gained so much knowledge, yet you struggle to remember where you were trying to go. Try to remember. You look for it, shifting through your thoughts. It comes to you with a jolt. You were trying to find your way to the master of many worlds. There was something about the door. Focus on the door. With that, the door begins to come into focus. You realize it is missing something. Use the branch with the door. The branch bonds with the door, creating a handle. And with that, the door is fully realized. Oh. I suppose I clicked and opened the door. You grasp the handle, the handle and open the door. Step over the threshold. You step inside, stand in a room with a man, the master of many worlds, sitting behind a desk, typing, turning concepts and ideas into words, shaping this reality, lift his head. Look at the master of many worlds. Do I get back to a 3D environment or is it going to be text-based until the end? You stare the man in the eye with a shock. Re you realize that you have made a mistake. You have come to the wrong place. The man, this master of many worlds, is not the one you were looking for. He's not Dor. He's someone else entirely. Could it be Alan Wake? Or Sam Lake? You want to ask him what he knows, but it's already too late. Continue. Oh god. It's getting closer. Uh, oh, it's Alan and his typewriter in the attic. We have witnessed a case of mistaken identity. But in the vastness of the multiverse, with an endless number well, of... What are the only ending? What are the mil multiple endings for this? Can there be more than one master of many worlds? Or did our hero take a wrong turn somewhere along the way? Was this particular journey precisely what was Oh, I need to find to out. I need, I, I need to look it up. One thing is certain. I am your host. The one and only Warland Door. And this is Night Springs. Night Springs. Yeah, James McCaffrey, he died. The voice for Max Payne. Cult made me feel like I was caught in a loop. And for Alex Casey. I I was getting closer. Things shifted around. And I realized that's that tragic. Was such a good voice actor. Before. Instead of answers, I only got more questions. Okay, I'm moving on to the outro. And in the meantime, I'm going to look up. Uh, whether there are multiple endings to this episode or not. So see you in a bit. And the answer is no! <laughs> there are not any other endings uh, than the one we just witnessed. Uh, there are some routes you can take in order to reach that ending, but these are the only uh, variables. Um, it's always gonna be this ending. Which is like the ending of episode 2, uh, when everything, you know, all this nonsense about coffee um, ends up with Alan Wake and this whole, you know, this whole adventure about walling door ends with Alan Wake. So I think the message here is that Alan is the one writing this and there is no way around it. And I think that's kind of weak as an ending, as a like the big revelation, the big epiphany. I mean, we know that already. 
this is not th this is nothing new yes of course Alan Wake is writing the events of Alan Wake the game and is being written maybe by Thomas Zane uh, and okay we get it already we don't need to be reminded over and over again that Alan Wake is the source of all creation in the Alan Wake universe This was maybe one time too many of hammering the same message home. We didn't need that. And it's a shame because, stylistically speaking, in terms of artistic vision, that episode was ambitious. The loop part was okay. Everything else was so cool. The comic book and the text-based adventure. I mean. Those were like strong visions, strong artistic choices. And this is what I usually like with Remedy. But I'll take episode 3 as a prime example of style over substance. At some point, you have to stop run, run you have to stop running in circles and you have to stop making the player run in circles and always come back to the same conclusion. Okay, it's not a lake, it's an ocean. It's not a loop, it's a spiral. Give us something new. Wall in door was something new. His identity is a big mystery and his role in this whole story. I mean, we have two big mysteries remaining in this universe, if you ask me. Wall in door and Artie. Who are they? What, what's at stake for them? What are their motivations? What's the goal of these two supernatural extra powerful entities? And of course, I didn't expect the DLC to give us all the answers, but you know, just some tiny answers? Well, we got Wallindor's origin story. And that's it. And that's it. So yeah, it felt a little pointless, really. I think I think my favorite episode is going to remain episode 1 because he didn't try to be something else than a very stupid take on a corny romance and you know it worked it worked it was so funny I loved it but yeah I know remedy you can't just drop Jesse Faden 